are you guys doing? Good, thanks. And yourself? Very well, and you? Nice to see yeah. you. <laughs> I, um, I'm just trying to figure it out. The, so, <laughs> ironically, as everything was all good, I've like sat myself at home and I can hear building works outside. Can you guys hear them? Are they bad? I can hear some hammering. I can hear it in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, okay, I just, um, I need to go and find some other ones because the ones that I plugged in didn't work. The ones that I called <laughs> no, no Ah, there you go. Does that yeah. work? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's fine. Ah, okay. I think the other ones did work. I just had the wrong output on my speakers. Ah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long have you been doing the podcast for? It's sounding awesome. Yeah, we, cool. we are, we're Thanks. around, what's it, eight months now, Craig, almost? Eight, seven, eight months, yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's, um, you know, it started off like, you know, fairly small and now we're growing and we're getting some really, well, we've always had amazing guests, to be fair, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. just really getting a lot of traction now, which is really cool and it's just yeah, it's really yeah. such a great learning experience for both of us, you know, we just speak to you. Yeah such interesting yeah, people and just people with cool stories and you just pick up so much from each guest it's so cool and how do you decide who to bring on uh it's a mix like we, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix like you know we we sort of have like a, a a little bit of criteria in terms of like you know just someone that's that that sort of ties in with uh you know who we are as people and and what's yeah. You know, the, the people that are generally spreading a, a good positive message. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know. It's it's a weird one because it's such a diverse uh, range of guests we've had on the show. Um, I would just say the overarching thing is it's like people that have good stories to share, um, people that are positive and um, people that are interesting, you know, and nice, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice house. No, this is a big yeah. one. No, it is a big one, actually. Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Hello, hello. hello. Okay, yeah, hello. That's, that's right. Hello. <laughs> um, so I'm going to mute that. And then I'm also just going to set up the audio mm. on my phone as well, just in case, just so we've got Thanks a backup, because so I don't fully trust myself. <laughs> <laughs> Your storyboard was super impressive. I can't believe how much research you've done. So oh, cool. <laughs> thank you for um, taking an interest. <laughs> no worries at all. I mean, it's, it serves us well, like for each chat, because when you when you've done the research, then you don't ever have a part in the conversation where you're like, ah, okay, what do we talk yeah, about now? You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, cause you know. But it's yeah. so interesting the amount of, the amount of conversations that you have and sort of interviews and things where people, which, you know, and I wouldn't expect people to take a huge amount of interest in what I'm doing, but you, you know, when you're having a conversation, it, for that exact reason, it makes it flow so much better when you've got oh, a little yeah. bit of an idea about, who you're talking to so yeah. Prep, yeah yeah exactly and, and my favorite point, thing was that you sorry. found my favorite song i was like <laughs> but i don't cool. even know where i wrote that <laughs> no, no well, i listened that to the cool. whole podcast with uh, you and will actually well do you want me to do you want to do a clap in or anything nah nah you're right That's cool. okay yeah, cool yeah. Thank you. I see, you got that sound, eh? Like, we'll yeah, like, yeah. He's teaching you well. <laughs> Shall we do that? <laughs> yeah, like one, two, three, cut. <laughs> okay, I'll try my best to send them over this afternoon, but if awesome. I, no I won't let you no have worries. to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I was cool. say, right. If I forget, then tell me, but I'm just not going to let that happen. I'll just do it now. <laughs> okay, Get it off well, the list. Cool. All right, guys. Cool. Take Thanks care. So much, have, a nice have a good afternoon. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Cheers. bye. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> What's up, Gareth? Great guys. In Portugal. How's it going, my man? How are you, buddy? <laughs> yes, I'm awesome, my man. How's uh, how's your day going there in Portugal? Yeah, it's good. Thanks, bud. Really good. Um, it's uh, yeah. We had a late podcast last night, so I had a little sleep in this morning, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just been working on some stuff for the podcast this morning. And yeah, how about your day, bud? Yeah, good man. The laptop lifestyle. Yeah, mine was good. Uh, just a good day. Good to be uh, here on our Monday. Oh, sorry, Tuesday evening this time actually. Yeah. Uh, doing our little introduction to a wonderful guest this week. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about who she is? Yeah, uh, we spoke to uh, such a great lady, um, Annie Clark, 
And Annie is, um, you know, she's an author, she's a young entrepreneur, uh, she is um, someone who's, uh, yeah, she's achieved like so much in a short space of time. She's, a, I guess you could say, an influencer when it comes to social media. Um, she is a yoga teacher um, and, and so many other things too, you know, and uh, yeah, and just such an inspiring lady who we had the most fascinating and awesome chat with. And we covered so yeah, many different types of topics. Hey, Greg. Yeah, yeah, fully. And um, one of those, like you mentioned, was social media. Uh, she runs a lot of her business through doing a lot of social media. And we, we touched on how she got into that and how she does that. Uh, we discussed decluttering one's life and one's mind um, and her strategies for that. Um, we discussed her authenticity and, and what that means in the modern day business. Uh, we discussed gut health, uh, yoga, uh, and uh, run how to run a retreat and where she runs retreats, uh, her mindset, and uh, we also discuss panel discussions that she hosts nowadays. So it was a really, really great chat, and uh, we look forward to getting into that in a second. But before we get there, uh, let's just take care of a bit of housekeeping. And uh, yeah, this week we've uh, you might hear that. I've got a bit of a dodgy voice <laughs> and uh, so and Gareth's in uh, Portugal like we said and so some of the sound might be a little bit weird hey yeah so uh, yeah I'm in Portugal and I'm sitting in my Airbnb and if you're watching this little on YouTube you'll see that I have like a microphone looking thing but it's actually a little muffler on my telephone <laughs> <laughs> So I uh, I brought a new microphone with me, um, and then as soon as I installed it, the thing didn't work. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit of an issue. <laughs> but um, it's a learned, I guess. We live and we learn, eh? So um, you know, that's just uh, that's just part of our trials and um, tribulations in terms of uh, us learning how to do a podcast uh, remotely, and uh, it's all just sort of money in the bank when you learn things like that. And, um, yeah, that's just part of our journey, I guess. And uh, the other cool thing about the housekeeping is that we're actually running a competition. And in terms of this competition, it's actually the first one we run. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be asking for our listeners to rate uh, and review uh, the podcast for us on one of the audio platforms, uh, preferably, so like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, um, or one of the other platforms like CastBox, for example. And then just to send us a, a picture of it, like a screenshot, and send that to us, I don't know, whatever you want, on Messenger, on um, a Facebook, on Instagram message, whatever it is. And then the one winner is going to get a free uh, introductory coaching session from me. Um, and that's a coaching session. Uh, you can kind of choose the, the subject that you want, but it can be around business, um, executive coaching, career coaching, uh, lifestyle, or something related to health. Um, and then, Craig, you also are going to give one of our lucky listeners um, something too, perhaps? Yeah, uh, definitely a bit of a wellness assessment. So you can uh, get hold of me uh, either in person or in another way and, and we can just run through some of your lifestyle habits and, uh, and I can also, if you're in person, I can actually have a look at you and uh, give you a good examination and see like how is everything functioning in your body and, and give you some feedback from there. So yeah, really exciting. I, I love the sound of that. So give us your rating and review, send us a pic. Uh, that would be really awesome. And uh, I can vouch for Craig. He's definitely uh, one of the, the best guys I know and one of the most authentic guys I know. So he'll help you out as, as much as he can. As much as he can. <laughs> it's kind of you. <laughs> and uh, well, one of the things that we like to, to um, speak about, I guess, between my, you and me, Craig, when we're just sort of having our weekly discussions is the importance of uh, authenticity. And um, it's something that you and I actually practice and, you know, we, we believe that, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in the world right now, you know, like I guess when it comes to business and getting ahead of everybody and progressing and stuff and there's a lot of like 
uh, you must hustle and you must do this and you must do that and and uh, you know I think it's all well and good for sure you must work hard and you must uh, do these things but sometimes it gets sort of maybe a bit misconstrued and um, I think the important parts that uh, we need to remember is to remain grounded and to keep our authenticity and it might be the longer road but I think that it's probably the the wiser road to take in the long run. Hey, Craig, what do you recommend? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and we really do discuss this a lot. And yeah. um, and the nice thing is that it's it, it's definitely in in some ways the easier road um, because you never have to go back and check and think about it. You just you know that you've just been straight and honest with yourself and with everyone around you. And I think our guest this week, Annie Clark from Mind Body Bowl, is like embodies this um, ethos 100 percent she's built a really successful business uh, and a really successful following uh, in exactly that way it's just by being a a really genuine sincere authentic uh, person uh, and and not being gimmicky in any way shape or form and that's what makes her so special and she's unabashedly honest about the way she goes about her health and her uh, trials and tribulations. And that's what makes her so special, hey? Absolutely. And I think the other really great thing about uh, Annie is that she, in this whole online world, right, she still spends so much of her time in person. You know, she she nurtures and builds her relationships primarily in person or not maybe not primarily but like a big chunk of it is you know so even though she is like a social media um, influencer and we know she doesn't like that word um, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, you know for the lack of a better word right now that that's what that's what she is and but mm. she still goes every single week and she uh, teaches yoga classes and she connects with people in person and she holds her workshops and she also does her retreats and stuff. And, and like she says, that's often where the magic happens. Yeah. And the, when you when I hear you speaking like that, and it's it's 100% true, it, it makes you think of a really wise individual, you know. And, yeah. and that's something that both of us totally, like, we were just blown away uh, with Annie. She's uh, certainly wise beyond her uh, years in, in many regards. She just comes across... Um, with a certain confidence, this inner confidence and calm, uh, which you don't necessarily see very often of someone who's 27, you know, it's just incredible. Um, And, uh, you know, one of the things, there's a quote that I wanted to read, um, and and both of us had to like think about it twice because it's kind of, you know, she just said it off the cuff, but she said, we're always at the mercy of what we know tomorrow because today we'll always be a little bit more naive than we are tomorrow. And it took a, we had to like take a moment to take that in. And we, that was just one of those kind of sentences that she um, said to us during the chat that was like, wow, that's just kind of deep, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> yeah, she was, we just, like you said, we finished the chats and we were like, wow, that was such a good chat. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. listening to the sort of, young philosopher or sage and like um it was, <laughs> it was it was such a great chat and the other other really cool thing that we that we love what she is doing is she started this um like what what not like a talk show but like a, a, panel. Um, a panel discussion yeah um called can we just ask and it's basically like you know talking about things that are sort of pertinent in the world in this day and age and Mm. uh, that are important to people. And maybe we don't talk about it enough, but they basically get um, a few good people, like, you know, say three or four people that sit on this panel. And then we just discuss, or they just discuss um, important topics. And it's just such a great idea, you know, and it's like in a safe environment where, You know, you can talk about things as adults and just understand people's different views, which is really, really important in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah, so true. One of those examples is like she was talking about uh, coffee cups and, you know, like and disposable coffee uh, mugs or or cups. And she's like, you know, she first 
you know, go around saying, don't use those, don't use those disposable cups. But then she's realized, you know, like, is that true? Is that actually true? And so sustainability is like one of her focuses. And so on one of these panels, you know, get people in that know about it, have the open discussion, have the honest discussion in a safe environment, like you said, and, uh, and all have the, uh, the, the, the platform to have that discussion and, um, and that's the only real way to learn and to grow is to be able to not, uh, uh, engage each other on with a, in a physical way or an angry way. Um, or even if it is angry, it's still a safe way to, to do that. And I think that's, yeah, it's just such a cool idea. And I think it's a very important thing to be, um, uh, sort of running at this day and age, you know, where there's so much, uh, emphasis on, fake news and all these weird ideas that people have going around and, um, you know, uh, echo chambers. Uh, it's just honest, brutal uh, discussions. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see how that goes with them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, well, let's go ahead and hear what it's like for Annie Clark to be ridiculously human. Nice cool stuff well uh, good morning there annie clark um from a nice uh, sunny day in london how is everything going for you so far hello hello um very good thank you it's such a beautiful day i feel like it gives me so much energy when the when you wake up and the <laughs> sun's shining so i'm in a good place <laughs> it's so different oh, in london awesome. isn't it because like it's been horrible weather this year, hasn't it? And like, it's just, it's been, I found it a little bit tough to almost get out of bed some days, you know, so it's yeah, nice definitely. having this bit of sunshine, definitely. Definitely. I, I saw in some news, say, something said, Scorcher in London, 24 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot for us, man. It's hot for us. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 everyone's like in their bikinis and <laughs> yeah, yes, shirts all with their shirts and off. <laughs> totally, yeah. awesome. So, so um, I think today is like a little bit of a, a different day for you because you normally sort of out and about teaching yoga and stuff. Um, but you also ran a, the Hackney Half Marathon yesterday. Is that right? I did, yeah. So the, we laugh at the heat. But this year I um, decided to support my boyfriend in uh, his challenge to raise some money for the mental health charity Mind. Cool. And uh, he's running three marathons in a year as well as wow. a half marathon here and there. So I signed up for the London Marathon kind of accidentally. Uh, and then and the Hackney Half uh, a week late, a month later, sorry. And I don't know how it happened, but both of them were like 20, 23, 24, yeah. 25 degrees. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think from now on, basically any any race that I enter into, for some reason, the temperature just <laughs> shoots up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's been good. It's been really, really good and to try something completely new. But um yeah, it's just been really hot. <laughs> yeah, you got a you got a really good time. How how did uh, did you do a bit of tra like fair amount of training and uh, and how are you feeling today? I I trained well for the marathon and mm -hmm. recovered really quickly from that. And then over the last kind of four weeks, I didn't really do that much running. I kind of ran maybe one or two sort of four, five, or six mile runs a week, um, and. And so I wasn't sure how yesterday was going to go. Um, and I definitely wouldn't have wanted to run another 13.1 miles <laughs> again afterwards when I finished, but, um, but no, it was, it was good. And, um, it's, it, I, I live in Hackney. Um, so it's, it was fun to kind of be in the local area and running up places yeah. like Broadway market, which is where I go and sit and have a coffee every Saturday morning and, um, yeah. just kind of seeing local people and friends out and about. So that was fun. And today I feel, I feel good today, actually. I thought I was going to be stiff, um, for my lack of training over the last month, but well I touch wood so far. So good. <laughs> uh, that's wow. so cool. So, so, so where, where do you normally go in uh, Broadway markets? Cause actually my girlfriend and I always like, we'll go there quite a bit on Saturday mornings too. It's Ah, La Bouche. That's La my Bouche. favorite. Yeah. Okay. So um, we sit and this makes me sound maybe older than my years, but mm -hmm. I just love to go. We, we used to go and sit. My boyfriend and I would take our books and sit and have a coffee. But now I don't even bother with my book. I just sit and people watch and I love it. Yeah. It's so such cool. nice. 
when this, especially again, when the sun's out and we just sit outside and uh, as the markets kind of before it gets too busy um, yeah. and just like as people are sort of strolling by and yeah, and the, and the kind of, it's starting to wake up. It's like that. I, yeah. I love the mornings generally when like before everyone's a week uh, awake, sorry. So like this morning I knew I had loads to do and I got up and I sat and I made myself some breakfast and I sat and just had that like productive time. And before that I did my meditation and just having that time before the world wakes up, there's something really special oh, about yeah. it. Um, and on a Saturday morning, uh, Broadway market, things don't really get, people don't seem to get out of bed till at least kind of midday. So if I'm there, at, if I'm there at nine or 10 o'clock, I have that time where it just feels like you're the only one that's awake. And I love that. Yeah. Oh, it's a special time of day, isn't it? You, yeah. can just, you, you just like can get into this zone where you, um, you know, we in touch with yourself and you just you can do whatever you want in your time. And it's just sleepy. It's really, really I love that as yeah. well. And Gareth and I listened to a podcast. He actually uh, introduced it to me the other day about sleep by, as Matthew Walker, that's yeah. not on the um, uh, what's his name Joe again? Rogan. Um, Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, Joe and Rogan. wow, it was such a like eye opener for me. And now I've been really trying to like get my seven hours in. And so I wake up like I always wake up really early, but now I'm trying to go to bed a bit earlier. Yeah, but it's so nice because you wake up really early, but you kind of fresh because you've got enough hours in, and it's you just feel so invigorated being yeah. up before everyone. Actually, it's so good. Definitely, and it's funny. I think when you we it's very easy to get into a pattern and feeling kind of heavy in the morning or tired is is mm. for most people or for a lot of people the normal and until you have that time where you have the opportunity to actually wake up feeling refreshed mm. for a few days you're like whoa how did I even get out of bed before yeah, um, yeah. and then you realize you know once you realize what how good it feels for, for me at least once I feel yeah, yeah. that you kind of you get hooked on it and you're like wow that's how totally. I want to feel every day when I wake up yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It influences the choices that you might make the day. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, it does for sure. Yeah, and also like just with regards to mornings, like I, I've always been like a morning person, and and I I actually think there's like a different sound to the morning. It's like yeah. the sound <laughs> of peace in a way. It's like mm. weird. You're like oh, I can hear it, and then you can almost. As it like gets a little bit later, you can hear the city waking up and Muscles. things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's just like so It's cool. like a different vibration. It's like the, yeah. the much softer energy. And especially being somewhere like London, you know, it's busy. And and I love that. But it's also like reminding yourself that there is yeah. quiet. You can find quiet and you can just sort of like take a breath and set yourself up rather than, you know, the first thing that so many of us do is we wake up in the uh. morning the alarm goes off on your phone and then suddenly you're on social media or you're oh, on your emails yeah. and and I'm yes. as guilty as the next person a lot of my a lot of mornings but I'm trying really hard to kind of make my mornings that sacred time yeah. Uh, yeah. where I just kind of sit with myself rather than with every other thing totally, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 I, I must yeah. say and what did you sorry you no, go you go, Craig no go bad no, no, I was going to change the subject a little bit. Oh, sorry. No, I was I was going to say, um, yeah, like uh, I think about maybe three years ago, like I made a conscious decision. I was like, cool, I'm going to not turn my phone on first thing in the morning. Yeah. And it's it's honestly, it's an amazing like shift in how your day actually ends up operating when really? you take you, you start managing your day on your terms by um, doing things you want to do and not and not consuming stuff that's going to impact your day, you know, because you might turn your phone on and you have like this message from your buddy or from a friend or social media, whatever it is, and it like, it annoys you, you know, and that sets mm -hmm. your day off really badly. So yeah. I've personally found that like, I'll only turn it on almost three hours after waking up. And it's just that's so awesome. cool. Like your day is yeah. like, Okay, now I'm ready. Now, and then you're ready to consume information. You're like, okay, throw it at me. If you've got horrible stuff, I'm ready for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's on your terms yeah. then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it makes a yeah. big difference. It's really important. But it's very easy for that yeah. not to be the case. You know, it's like everything else is working to make it not the case and to, to make us completely dependent on on that information conscious or subconscious that that's coming through our phones and yeah, yeah. it's um it's reminding for, for me right now it's remembering that how much of an impact it made when we we 
set um last probably about this time last year my boyfriend and I went for a few months um where we would put we had like a mezzanine we slept on a mezzanine in our flat so mm. we could put out we don't have an alarm clock so I could set the alarm on my phone but put it downstairs and oh, yeah. have my phone on airplane mode downstairs so my my alarm would go off and I'd get out of bed straight away because I couldn't uh-huh. snooze it so I'd have to go <laughs> downstairs but it meant that those the beginning what you know going to bed those that like last hour before going to bed or the the first hour in the morning like I'd, I'd turn the alarm off and then I'd just put my phone to the side and having yeah. that time either side of of sleeping um yeah it just it creates space yeah. and that's what I think we have so much of a lack of is mm. space and totally. <laughs> my big intention this this year is to declutter in as many senses as possible so Mm -hmm. that's like (laughs) email mailing lists and my wardrobe and my flat and and you know when I moved house I was like how much stuff can I get rid of and um I think the nature of of my work is that there is quite a lot of stuff and um it's an incredible thing that I get to try lots of products and uh things like that but it just means that there's always a lot of stuff and as that I lost a hard drive a couple of weeks ah, ago and it had oh like no. all of my videos, all of my photos oh, on and my parents, as they always do. My dad, I think my dad, since I was about 15 and we started using computers at school and my dad was always like, you have to have a backup. You have to have mm, a backup. And yeah. anyway, I checked and I was like, Oh, I lost my hard drive. And they were like, did you have a backup? I was like, no, oh, I didn't have a backup. <laughs> <laughs> but what I realized was like in this, I, I just, not one part of me was upset about it. Cause I was like, wow, think of all that digital clutter that I just mm, got geez. rid of. Yeah. And I mean, wow. there's, there's probably some things that would have been handy to still have. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, oh, it feels quite like a weight has been lifted. And so anyway, like as we're, you know, decluttering and creating space it then allows you you know in your diary to be if you have space between the things that you've committed to you have the opportunity to be reactive to your environment rather than just like moving from thing to thing on autopilot and so yeah I'm I'm that space either side of sleeping and 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 throughout the day is is I think key to especially living and working in a big busy city i think it's i think it's kind of kind of crucial it could get pretty frenetic in a, in a busy city as well and it's mm-hmm. not you can't just easily step out and get into instantly into nature and dead quiet so mm-hmm. even more value in like decluttering so you yeah. you were saying oops i just you lost get you get a lot of like stuff like to do with oh can you hear me i can Gareth, now. can you hear me Oh. Yeah, I went out a bit there for a sec, bud. Am I back? You're back. You're back. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Um, right. I was just going to ask. Um, you, you mentioned that you get a like a bit of stuff sent to you and stuff. Is that because of being like a um, social media influencer and that? Do people send you stuff and like how does that work? Is it like do you constantly have to like uh, engage with that and and use it or do you have um, a choice or? I kind of made a decision a long time ago went so my sort of I guess graduation into I mean I hate the word influencer but I mm. guess it 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 labels a thing and it helps us to associate you know expectations and things so for for want of a better word influencer <laughs> um I I never had any intention of doing what I do now. Um, I didn't even think that I'd be a yoga teacher. So things have kind of happened in a weird way. Um, but in the, in the early days, um, it was when I was making steps towards changing my lifestyle and things, it was really exciting that well, there wasn't that much out there in terms of food products and, you know, and every everything was, I found it really difficult to find things that I liked. And so to the, start having the opportunity to try out new things as brands were coming into the marketplace was a really exciting way to just stay involved in, um, in understanding what was available um, and then, you know, making choices. But what I realized very quickly is how easy it was to get kind of sucked into trying all these different things and not actually having any kind of authentic connection to anything. Um, 
And so as I became more comfortable in in myself and my lifestyle and um, actually how simple things need to be, there's no need for anything more than, than what we have. Um, I realized that I had quite a lot of choice um, and that there, there shouldn't be any pressure to, to try things or share things if I didn't genuinely and authentically want to share them. And as I guess, as my platform started um, building, I realized that I had, I guess, more of, I don't know, I guess, an influence over the, the or a responsibility over what I shared because of the influence that it could have. And so I feel as though now I, I make choices to be quite selective in terms of the things that I even try in the first place, mainly because of that feeling of clutter and um, the responsibility that if you, if somebody sends you something, like I feel like, I then owe them something and I don't like to do that because I want to only share things that I really believe in. So, um, so now something that's just kind of at the heart of, of me and my, I guess my ethos is just to have authentic relationships with people and, um, nothing is worth sharing at the risk of or at the cost of your authenticity in my opinion mm. and um and so that's kind of what i try and stick with and that's really helped with the decluttering <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> so that means that you know i can just say right this is where i want to spend my energy these are the things that i'm interested in and everything else is noise and there's so much noise everywhere um that if you can actually choose things to engage in and the things to be excited about then you can actually be excited about things you can't be excited about everything yeah it's, it's not yeah. sustainable <laughs> totally yeah. True. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's kind of that's how i've na- navigated it but it's con- i mean it's the most bizarre and amazing um uh world that we're living in um mm. and i think it's it's constantly evolving and so we have to be constantly evolving and and changing our choices my my favorite um bit of advice or saying i guess is that we we're always at the mercy of what we know tomorrow because today we'll always be like a little bit more naive than we are tomorrow and Mm -hmm. and it might be that actually we think we know something today and we realize tomorrow that we don't know it it doesn't mean that we know better it might mean that we know less but in knowing less we know no better and I think you know we can't judge ourselves on the choices that we made yesterday because yesterday we were a different a different person so it's being being kind enough to yourself to make choices and be okay with your choices, even if tomorrow yeah. you'd have made them differently. Um, and 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 that allows, I think when I tell myself that, it allows me the flexibility to be like, whoa, everything around is changing so quick. Yeah. And it's okay to make mistakes and change how sure. I think about things. And yeah, so it's it's evolving with the evolution of everything around us, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, yeah. I like that, yeah. yeah that's very cool advice. Um, so when you when you say like you're getting rid of clutter and stuff, is, what 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 sort of kicked that off? Did you did you watch like the minimalist movie or you know something like that? <laughs> I have or? seen that. Yeah. I have seen that. I do you know what it was? I went probably for about three years, um, not re- feeling like I was ever stressed. Um, you know, things would come up and you'd work around them, but like never really feeling that base level of stress. And then I realized over the last kind of year and went through quite a lot of stuff. My boyfriend had problems with his mental health and um, that was, I, I felt less what I associated as stress I'm more overwhelmed Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'd look at my to-do list or I hadn't even written the to-do list down and I just had too many tabs open in my head and was just like, whoa, I'm so overwhelmed. And that whole idea of too many tabs, I was like Mm. looking around my flat. I was like, oh my God, no wonder there's too many tabs in my head. Look how many things there are here. And um, part of 
uh, yoga philosophy is um, this word asteya, which means basically taking what just what you need, like no more than mm. what we need. And I was like, started to realize the world of excess that we live in. And mm. I'm incredibly fortunate that that is my reality. Um, and, but actually it can, for me, I was starting to find it overwhelming that I just, there was so much to do and so many things to sort out. And I think as I, <laughs> as I started getting older and having more responsibilities, I was like, oh my God, admin, I'm not drowning in admin. <laughs> um, so, you know, they were people, I did a, um, I'm an ambassador for Lululemon and I went away with them on, they do a, like a yearly ambassador summit and uh, we were talking about kind of leadership and, and various different principles and how important it is to be able to accept the things that you can't change and act on the things that you can. Mm. And I was experiencing this overwhelm, which is a type of stress, um, having gone for so long, experiencing zero stress. And I realized that I was just taking it as if it was given yeah. and, and just accepting it. And then I can, I guess I just had a word with myself and I realized that actually there was so much that I could do to change it, but it was just going to have to be a big shift if I wanted things to change. And so I didn't suddenly just like throw out all of my things. Mm. Um, but another big, another big part of that was that my boyfriend and I were living together and we decided to move out of our flat. And while we were looking for somewhere else, we put all our stuff in storage and we put all our furniture in storage and he went and lived with his sister and I went and lived with my sister because there wasn't space for us both and all of our stuff at either one. Wow. And so <laughs> I then dropped him off with his stuff. We put all our, furniture and storage dropped him and his stuff off at his sister's and I went to my sister's and I couldn't believe how much there was still like a van full of just stuff yeah, yeah. I was like what even is this like I don't need it I need the clothes on my back I need like a few pairs of yoga pants to teach him <laughs> and like that's kind of it um and so while I was living on like my my sister who also had a mezzanine so it's like up living on this mezzanine in her living room with all of my stuff and I was like right I don't know how long I'm gonna be here but I need to start getting rid of this yeah um and I left a, like two months later with less than half of the things that I'd arrived with and I can't even remember what I, I you know I gave things to friends and I took stuff to charity shop and I just kind of you know, rather than looking at that thing and thinking, oh, I haven't used that in yeah. a year, but it's probably <laughs> going to come in handy. I was like, well, if you really need it again, then you'll buy it down the line. But mm. right now it's it's yeah, totally. an extra tab open in my head. So I think that was the real, I've been having these thoughts before in my previous flat, but moving and just arriving with, I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so embarrassed that I've <laughs> let it, you know, and I make myself sound like a hoarder. It's It's not like that. It's just, you know, we have, your boxes of paperwork and you have yeah. you know all the stuff that just just accumulates and you think actually there's ways of having less without losing out on anything totally. and, and actually by having less I feel like I've gained so much more because <laughs> I have space <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and so if you cool. have space you have room to grow so you know totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's so, kind of what kicked it off. And I'm by no means thing. perfect. I'm by no means perfect, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when I moved to the Netherlands. Oh, sorry, to Australia from the Netherlands. I also well, we we downsized a lot, and all of our stuff was you know either left in our old place or was in a container. So when we got here, we had very little, and it was so it was like amazing and then when i realized like whatever it was like a month or two later that the container would be arriving we got the, the notification that it's arriving i was almost like i was almost disappointed i was like oh because <laughs> i've actually what am i going to do with all this extra stuff now and yeah. it was so weird because i really like literally didn't miss any of it and, no. I was, and i only took my essentials with me you know and I well in the container which i totally weren't essential um, but anyway, that's that's how you live and learn. So well, yeah, exactly. Is, uh, yeah, and then you learn. It. No, then you then right. you realize that it's not. You know, it's the, the things that we think are essential. When you then have the time away from it, 
you realize how it's the same as, you know, you think of your diary or your work or your home life. When you have time away, like you take a break, you realize which things serve you and which things don't. And, okay. and actually a lot of the time we are um, warped by our immediate situation, I think. Um, warped made, makes it sound bad. It's not meant to seem so negative, but we're so um, governed or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you get the time away, it's it's like how um, on Facebook, right? You see what you like. So the uh, more you like of a certain mm. type of content, the more of that content you see, and you kind of get this like tunnel vision. Mm. I feel like that happens with you know the more you see something, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's there, it's there, it's there. And when it's away, you're like. Do, is it essential? Absolutely not. Totally, totally. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. What did you end up doing with all the stuff in the container? Oh, you still have I mean, it. I unpacked it all, and then you know, the, the, I had. I'm not going to lie to you. There was a moment of like, you know, Christmas time feeling. Mm. Like, oh, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> what was in this box? I can't even remember all the stuff that I had. And to be honest, some of it went out. I was like, I'm just not keeping half of this. And then one or two of like like this bookshelf, I don't know if you can see it, but I kept that, yeah. you know, like one or two things that are actually like kind of special in a way because you, you know, made a mission to get them. But other than that, like, you know, a lot of it's gone and, and I haven't really got, I won't allow it to get to that same point anymore because yeah. of exactly what you were saying. It just starts to govern the way, like the too many tabs open. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good analogy. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. But it's the staying yeah. on top of it. It's like without letting it. I think the overwhelm comes from the like when you get there and it's just you've let it get too too much. It's like if you yeah. can stay. I said to myself this morning, like I had looked at my to-do list and was like, whoa, I could feel really, really stressed right now. Or yeah. I could tackle the little things that, yeah. <laughs> you know, or break it down into small tasks. Yeah. I'm like, this is not one big task. It's lots of little ones. And actually in 10 minutes I ticked about five things off my to-do list and I was like oh <laughs> yeah so that's okay Sweet. I was like things are going to be fine <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah totally oh, so cool. five tabs <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had the same feeling this morning I was writing down my list and like it was like it ended up being like 30 things and I'm like oh my god guys, what is <laughs> you're so much yeah. stuff to do um yeah. but it's also having like we got in yesterday from we'd run and then we you know, we saw some friends and we spent some time in the sunshine and I am quite good both myself and my boyfriend are quite good at Sunday nights being a bit of a like sorting and preparing for Monday and I think that's great but it also can mean that you lose the magic of it being the end of the weekend yeah, Sunday and evening, yeah. yeah exactly and and suddenly Monday starts at like six o'clock on or yeah. four o'clock on Sunday um <laughs> so I that's you know so yesterday I was like right I'm not going to do that but what I am going to do is have my notebook next to me and write down as I start as the cogs start ticking and I'm like oh I need to do that I need to do that just having the kind of um the ability to think of it write it down and know that I can come back to it but then clear it out and let that be Mm. not stay in my mind um because it's you know for me a lot of the time I'm like I just need to get it done and then it's done like I'll think of something and I want it done immediately but it means that I end up dotting around doing 10 different things because I get distracted by my other thoughts and just want to Mm. tick everything off and end up not taking anything off um so (laughs) I was like but what I can also do is I can write them down I can build my list and then they're then they have to be like tomorrow's oh, to-do yeah, list, yeah. not today's. So it's okay for them to happen tomorrow. Because um, otherwise we just become a slave to the to-do list. And I, I'm learning more and more about, you know, we're talking about the sacred moments in the morning is that for me, weekends have to be that as well. And mm. I, I used to teach a lot of classes at the weekend and now I just try to save uh, the weekends for, I'll do events and kind of, and retreats and that kind of thing. But um, but as much as possible, trying to keep those weekends yeah. as work free, um, because an email can turn into half a day of emails, and yeah. then yeah, so totally. yeah, it's so That's easy true. to get sidetracked, and yeah. yeah, and that just have like you said, having that time to yourself on a weekend 
is so important, especially when you work for yourself, because people are like, it's really easy to just get absorbed into, you know, what mm. you're doing and going, oh, I've got all this stuff to do and I must just do it. And then you just, you don't end up having any of your own time. So your energy level depletes and you just become unproductive. So, yeah. And it's that space. It's the same as taking a break, you know, the tunnel vision that you get in the, you know, whether you work for yourself or for somebody else is that you, you're in that space and you go further and further and further down the tunnel and actually even just having half a day to step away and then come back, you have fresh eyes and you have fresh mm. thoughts and you can actually come back to it with a new lease of life and possibly a different perspective and I think no matter what you do that's can be really really helpful in just yeah 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 Yeah, absolutely I like that idea because it's like if you if you you know a lot of people talk about it these days being like ruthlessly present you know Mm -hmm. in the moment which I which I really subscribe to that kind of thinking but if you've got that thought arising you don't want to pull on that piece of yarn and you know unravel the whole lot but to just write it down, boom, and then you can come back to being present. Mm. It's kind of like you've almost uh, got the best of both worlds that way. Um, mm. And you can deal with when you really are present tomorrow with your to-do list, then you can be present and the fact is still there, you know. So it's a really, it's a cool yeah. way to do it. And it's what you try and um, try and do in meditation really is to like observe thoughts that come up. Obviously, uh, well, some people do. I don't then break my meditation and write them down but I just observe that they're there but like you said not pull on the yarn and not let them unravel you come back and just say okay that thought will be there still it's not for now I observe that it's there but I'll come back to it and that's you know and that's a, a, a practice and if you take it's all very well that being a practice for your sort of I don't know 15 10 15 40 minutes of meditation but can we the whole point of these tools and these practices like yoga meditation or whatever they might be for you is to, uh, to work with them as a practice, but so that we can apply them in our everyday life. And I think that the yoga and the, and the mindfulness that comes off the mat and, and out of the practice into, you know, the practice doesn't really ever stop, yeah. but where mm. we can take those methods and, you know, that's what I feel like I was doing yesterday is kind of trying to put my meditation into practice and say, okay, this is where that thought stops for now and I'll come back to it. But yeah. for the fear of forgetting it, I was writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you, you're throwing out like so much uh, wisdom to us, like about like life and stuff <laughs> like that. And it's, it's really amazing. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, our listeners love to hear is is the story of our of our guests. And mm-hmm. but first of all, just to kind of give this a little bit of context, um, I think I probably started what, uh, following you on Instagram about two years ago, and then about a year and a half ago, um, before I was I left my previous role, I. Um, I actually got in touch with you like on Instagram, like I sent you a direct message. And I was like, Hey, how's it going? Um, I, I'm going to India in like, you know, I, I'm planning to go to India to do a yoga, um, um, teacher training. And I was like, which one did you do? Which school did you go to and stuff like that in, in Goa? And you got, you, you got back to me and stuff. So, um, that was like the first time I guess I, I was ever in touch with you. Um, and did you go and do your training in the end? Yes, I did. I went and did it. Um, I, w- I actually went to go to Cranty, um, uh, yeah, Euro, which, yeah. which was also really, really great. Um, so, so yeah, it was, it was super, super cool. I, I'm so happy that I did it. It was like, it's one of those life changing things, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a life changing country. I think when you, when you visit India too, like mm. there's, there's something so special about it and you, you yeah. kind of keep a bit of that with you for the rest of your life I think definitely I think there's there's some real I think it comes a lot through the people but it just yeah I think you're right it's there's something special there for sure yeah definitely so so and anyway then um before we started the podcast Craig and I like uh literally you know seven eight months ago I was like We've got to speak to this girl, and yeah. we literally, I think we we must have messaged you before we actually started it, and we did. Um, 
And, and I just and it took me took you eight months to pin me down. <laughs> yeah, no, I woo, had good too job, Gareth. Yeah, 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 lots of tabs, but, but that's cool. So, <laughs> so. But that, do you know what? That's I'm huh. I'm laughing, and you guys are being in good humor because really you're probably like, oh my gosh, she was a nightmare. <laughs> um, but do you know what? It's exactly the, this sort of reason that this decluttering has become like not just a challenge but an essential for me because. I realized how many interesting conversations I was missing out on. And, and I don't just mean conversations as in, you know, sitting and chatting to people um, on, you know, on podcasts and things, but yeah. just being that reactive to, to opportunities to meet people mm -hmm. because I was in the depths of my you know mm -hmm. couldn't stay on top of my inbox and I couldn't stay on top of like putting my clothes away after <laughs> doing my washing yeah. and, and I think that's exactly it is it and then you realize that actually not only are you missing out but you're also letting people down and and yeah it's kind of it's kind of at the key of it so anyway it's a, a roundabout way of apologizing for being no. so useless but now <laughs> now that I'm here I'm I'm so pleased that we finally managed to do it because obviously since since kind of speaking to you all that time ago and and hearing what the podcast was going to be yeah. um because it wasn't it didn't even exist yeah, yeah exactly um it, it sparked my interest and, and it's been so exciting to see how it's kind of unraveled and see how you guys have brought all your ideas together <laughs> and, and spoke to some, sp spoken to some cool people as well. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, thank we're you. We're glad so, to add you to yeah. the list of those awesome people. Thank yeah, you. We, yeah. We are very glad. So thank you so much. I mean, we always play the long game with guests. I promise you. We like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, it, was all, it was all part of the plan. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so as you, as you probably well know, like, um, you know, we like to get to know, like, you know, who made this wise lady, you know, and like, what, what is your sort of backstory? So, you know, if you don't mind just sort of taking us back a little bit to when you were a youngster, I guess, growing up in the UK somewhere and yeah, just leading off from there. Yeah, of course. So I've got a pretty straightforward story. Um, but I was born in London. Uh, I lived in London my whole life cool. um, with my parents and my younger sister. And I was really lucky to, um, the first school that I went to uh, didn't suit me so well. Um, my parents said that they were trying to, um, they felt as though they were trying to sort of make carbon copies <laughs> of the girls <laughs> at the school. Um, yeah. I think maybe I was bullied, um, <laughs> but I have like vague memories, but I was so young that I'll, I'll you know, I'll, we'll, we'll see at some point if that like trauma comes up in my yoga practice, then I'll deal with it. <laughs> but now I love that my parents wanted to give me the freedom to be who I wanted to be. And I think I'm, I, I guess that has been a major player that I'm only really realizing now is that um, my my parents pushed me at school, but not to the point that um, that they didn't give me the freedom to make choice. And I was I was the kid that would take up like a musical instrument for three months, be like <laughs> super committed and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to have my own violin or clarinet or recorder yeah. or whatever. And then like a month later, be like, oh, actually, I don't know if I want to do this. Um, and they had just about enough patience to to let me explore, um, uh -huh. which which I don't think I gave them enough credit for at the time. But um, but I'm starting to to realize now um and I went through school um did you know did did well at school did my you know all my exams and um then went to university and realized that I'd was really good at being spoon fed at school <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly got to university and with the freedom to of that choice and um I just I didn't make the I didn't make choices that I enjoyed so the courses that I chose and I say courses because I think I chose about five I tried about five different courses at university um starting off with languages like French and Chinese uh French and Spanish um and then eventually 
I went via something else and ended up doing economics for two years. Um, Dad persuaded me to stick it out to the end of the second year. Um, <laughs> I still have nightmares about the exams, like genuine nightmares <laughs> about um, how little I know, knew turning up to those exams. Um, oh my and, uh, and then eventually I, I, I came out of a uh, university. I was at Nottingham and um, did a fast track marketing degree in, in London just to kind of round. By this point, I'd done three years of university but hadn't got a degree so to round to try and round it off and have some kind of certification to show <laughs> for it uh, I did this one year um, and it was quite an interesting experience not a particularly nice one um, but I stuck with it and it was in that year that I made really big uh, changes to my lifestyle so while I was at university I, I'd always been sociable and I'd always loved organizing things so if you know, at school, if there was something I, you know, I did the trying to think I was on the charity committee and we organized this big fashion show and all of those kind of things I was really into, um, which was probably quite lame, but I loved them. Um, <laughs> and I always had a job and I valued my independence and again, had the freedom from my parents that if, you know, as long as I was doing what I needed to do, then, then I had that freedom. Um, I then went to university and uh, yeah, alongside doing or well, trying multiple different degrees, I, uh, I started running club nights. So, <laughs> um, I liked to party, um, <laughs> and I had a lot of fun and I, left university um tired exhausted um with terrible digestive issues and to the point where um every time i ate i had to sleep for about three hours because my body just kind of shut down wow. didn't, didn't matter wow. what i'd eaten but my body just couldn't um couldn't handle it and i spoke to doctors and they were like yeah yeah it's just IBS you know same old story um and I refused to go on the medication that they were putting me on and I just felt like I wanted to try some other things um and what I eventually realized is that I didn't have IBS or any of the things that they wanted to diagnose me with but there were certain things that were causing inflammation in my body and what I'd been doing in the in that time of partying and I thought I was looking after myself but I didn't realize that actually I was looking after myself in the wrong way mm. um I mean obviously not completely because I was still going out and drinking lots and having mm. late nights but I also tried to eat fairly well and go to the gym mm. and but I realized that I just I didn't understand my body I was just doing what other people did and thinking that that was right for me and um when I came back home from university I really had to I had to study really hard because the course that I was doing was really intense and so I just got really I felt quite lonely a lot of my friends had gone um had gone and got their jobs and were doing you know they had more money than me they had more things to entertain them than me and I just got stuck into really just understanding myself and trying to make myself feel better and so I realized that what had happened was that the, you know, my gut bacteria and um, was so out of balance and my body was so inflamed that anything that I was putting in my body was irritating me. And so I went through, I kind of had this, this turning point where I was like, right, I either have a choice of letting this get me down and spending the next however many years feeling just as rubbish as I do now. And try and look at what everyone else is doing and if that works then great but the chances are it's not going to work for me and that will be really frustrating but basically realizing that there was no quick fix um I was like or I can get really excited at this opportunity to do to just explore the things that make me feel good and that started as a really physical thing but as things like my yoga practice developed I realized that actually it was my physical well-being as well as my mental well-being and actually that those things were really interconnected mm. um, and so I had this I guess year of 
discovery. Um, and in that year, I changed a lot. So I tried to be, had like really strict diets. I tried doing certain things at the gym. I was doing loads of yoga. And then I started to kind of navigate and work out what made me feel good. And I guess explore finding a better sense of balance. Because as I went down this kind of tunnel of making myself feel good a little bit like we said at the beginning of the of the conversation when you wake up in the morning and you feel amazing you want to feel that way every day but I was letting that get in the way of like my social life not even just about whether I was drinking or not but just the idea of like being out past 10 o'clock I was like I just want to sleep well because I want to feel good tomorrow morning and I started to realize that physically I could get myself feeling really well but I had to also take care of my mental well-being as well and and that actually balance doesn't exist as this end goal and it's actually just like this constant road of discovery and 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 curiosity and playing with one thing and then you know and then moving another way and through different seasons and um you know things change and just being adaptive to that change was how I was going to find a sense of balance um and that was quite a big, yeah, a big turning point for me. And my, my parents were incredibly, I was living back at home by this point and my parents were incredibly supported, but also quite bored of listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when I set up my blog um, because nobody would talk to me about it. And I was like, well, I'm just going to document it and I'm really enjoying this. So I'm just going to do it and no one needs to, no one needs to see it. And, it was funny because my sister had told me about Instagram like a while before. And I was like, that's so weird. Like, why would you post loads of pictures on Instagram? <laughs> um, and I just really wasn't into it. And then eventually I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying taking pictures of food and things. So I started posting them on Instagram. And I remember coming into my parents' kitchen at one point and being like, mom, how weird is this? 70 people following this Instagram profile that I made where I'm posting pictures of my food. I was like, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Like, why, would, why would 70 people be interested in what I'm doing, considering I hadn't told anyone what it was that I was doing? And little did I know yeah. that that was kind of like the beginning of what would turn into a large part of my work um, uh, over the years to come. Um, but it was just, I just remember so vividly being like, I think it was 74 and I was like 74 people like what weirdos <laughs> and they, but actually they built like the base of my community and um and the conversations that I started having and and they're probably like the coolest 74 people in the world but cool. um but yeah that, so and, and and then I guess through that I I, I got my first alongside my my um the degree that I was doing in that in that final year in London I um I got a job working part-time as the first employee at Deliciously Ella um oh, cool. and that was kind of I wasn't going to go for it because I didn't even know that I wanted to um and then I just I was like hey it's somebody that might you know talk about things that I'm interested in and and this could be cool and I had um ended up having a wonderful kind of um first proper job working for an incredibly fast growing company but at the very early days where I got stuck into absolutely every part of the business and um and had so much fun just being able to explore um this industry that had got me so excited about looking after myself um and and actually being kind of at the forefront of it and as as it evolved in London that was um yeah when I, I don't think I really realized it at the time but looking back it's like wow that was a really really special thing to be able to do and Ella's now a good friend of mine and is you know her her business is thriving in just in more ways than we could have ever imagined and um and through that I found the things that I really loved and the things that I wasn't so interested in and, and managed to kind of turn and pave my way in a slightly different direction. And I guess that's kind of a yeah. <laughs> long winded short version of, cool. uh, of, of how I've ended up <laughs> where I am now. I, um, I left so there and, um, and 
kind of had she was she was starting to really formalize her business and was like okay well really like working with you and we turned into the best of friends and we were spending so much time together and we're like okay so with this new structure of the business my role got split into kind of three different parts because it was growing so fast um and she was like well you can have one of these jobs but really think you should do your own thing and you you know you benefit so I essentially got made redundant but in um but in a really loving way and (laughs) but at that point was like oh shit I've got to work out what to do for myself sorry I don't know if I'm allowed to swear Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, but I was like oh god I'm gonna have to work out what what I want to do and I had no idea so I spent um I, I tried doing some personal training and I did a course and was like, nope, definitely not for me. Um, but I was doing so much yoga that I decided to spend the last of my savings on a yoga teacher training. Um, and it was, you know, I talked a few moments ago about being the person that would like play six, six different musical instruments because I wasn't sure. And I changed my university course a hundred times. And I never really thought, felt like I found something that I could that I stepped into and like felt as though I'd arrived where I'm meant to be and like the first time I think on like two days into our teacher training we had to teach just five minutes of a class like that was it and it was the first time in my life that I really remember just being like whoa I didn't the that just felt right um and I hadn't gone with any intention of coming back and being a yoga teacher, but yeah, the rest is history. It wow. felt right. And, and, and that's, that's now such a big part of, of what I do is teach and share yoga. Yeah. To, yeah. That's so cool. And, and it's a cool feeling when something clicks like that. Yeah. 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 And to have never experienced it properly before, I don't think it was, it was quite unusual. Um, but I was like, oh, so maybe, maybe this is the thing. And, and actually my dad had joked at my younger sister's graduation when I still hadn't graduated in anything. Um, (laughs) he was like, I don't know, maybe you should just go and travel the world and be a yoga teacher or something. (laughs) And it was at that point, I realized that I really did have his kind of, you know, as much as he wanted me to be like the straight A student and, and, um, perhaps that he, he, always knew deep down that I probably wasn't going to end up going in the in the same direction as most of my peers and yeah 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 Yeah. and and I mean it's it's such a cool story like just uh, you know just hearing you know to hearing all of that you know because I think it's so it's actually a lot of people can relate to that you know because we're all kind of like figuring out kind of what we want to do in life and definitely you know sometimes we all think oh we're not good enough or whatever and it just it just sometimes takes a bit longer you know for to find out what what works and and that's just part of the journey so so just sorry just to take it back a little bit you know like we're going to get on now you know to your the rest of the story because it's kind of you know one of the places where it really kicks off for you but you know in in your in your early years your dad was sounds like he was quite a big influence in your life and you know it sounds like music is also quite a big thing for you and you you grew up listening to a lot of soul and reggae and yeah and and, and I, I when I was doing the research uh, you know just a bit more about you and your your whole story I was listening to um to a podcast or radio show with um you and your your boyfriend now uh, Will and uh, you were talking about your dad and like the sort of eclectic um, taste he has in music. And, you know, you, you used to sort of sit in the back of co- the car on long journeys and stuff. And yeah. you'd be playing, <laughs> playing like all these different guys like Eminem and stuff. And so what was that like? What, what, what sort of influence did he have on you in terms of music and other things in your life? He, uh, yeah, he's had a, and still continues to have a big influence. Um, and I think it's one of those things as you start to reflect more as you get um, a little bit older, I think. And do you know what? Something that I, I realized uh, recently is that as, so I'm 27, and it was only really once my parents moved 
my parents about a year and a half ago moved out of London and went down to Cornwall um, to open a shop there. They have like a cafe, bike hire and beach shop, which is cool. the most amazing but random change of, <laughs> <laughs> of career and, and, and interest and stuff. But it was only really at that point that you, that I felt like I'd made that shift from when when we're growing up, mum and dad were mum and dad and quite selfishly as children, you know, children only know how to be selfish up to a certain point. I think for my sister and I, perhaps that that continued, you know, we'd we'd go away and we'd come back and mum and dad would ask what we were up to. And mum and dad were just being mum and dad. And it was when they actually moved or I moved, we grew up in South London and I moved east and didn't see them so often. And then they moved it was funny, actually, when I moved to East London, my dad was like, are you sure you want to move away from, <laughs> from your friends and your family? And I was like, yeah, dad, it's like 30 minutes away. It'd be totally fine. <laughs> and then about four months later, they were like, actually, we're moving to Cornwall. It's about six hours away. Um, <laughs> then, um, but, you, but you start to, I kind of made that shift or, or, or realized that we'd made that shift between seeing mom and dad as these like invincible, just superhuman mum and dads to actually being real life people mm. just like anybody else that you meet and yeah. and the experiences that they've had um and the impact that that then has on you is is enormous and the you just take those kind of things and and I've always been very fortunate that that to have both my parents around but you take all of that or I took all of that for granted, I think, for a long time. But um, we used to make these long car journeys down to, uh, to, to France. We spent a lot of our uh, school holidays in France when we were growing up. And we'd be in the car for 15 hours and it would just be like, <laughs> we just couldn't, wow. the idea of it was just hell. And, but yeah. it was actually such an incredible thing that we that we did but dad would our car journeys were soundtracked like we had awesome. reggae and then my dad loves elvis presley Ooh. and <laughs> such, a, such a random eclectic music taste and i just remember singing along so of all the instruments that I tried growing up, my I all I really wanted to do was sing. But mum and dad always said, you haven't stuck anything out, out long enough for us to warrant singing lessons because what good is that going to do? Like you sing all the time anyway. So anyway, I, um, but I just spend poor, I can't imagine how awful it must have been for them, but I'd like sing for 15 hours and just like <laughs> being this like, 10 year old kid singing reggae in the car down to, <laughs> down to France. It just, it's just now feels so surreal that that was, that was just our normal and you just don't think of anything, uh, anything else, but actually it's so, I recently, um, I bought my boyfriend a, a vinyl player and went to, I found all of my dad's old records and um, a lot of them unfortunately got, got destroyed um, in, uh, they were in a basement that that got damp and or, or flooded and so a lot of it got destroyed but you could sort of make out most of it and he just had has the most eclectic and random taste in music and um I came back from I remember coming back to school when I really liked Eminem when I was I don't know probably about 13 14 and I came into my kitchen my dad was rapping Eminem and I was like dad how do you even know the words to this <laughs> um, and I think for all the you know for all the um you know the, the nags and the kind of, you know, go and do your homework and do this is that actually um, as, as people, my parents, or I feel like, in fact, I, it's, I know that my parents are, are pretty special. And so it's, um, it's nice to recognize that as we get as, you know, and to recognize them um, for, for what they've given us. And I think a big, big part of that has just, been their support in in the choices that that we make and letting us letting us make mistakes but also mm. um but also offering just 
phone call after phone call of guidance along the way. And, um, and my sister has recently qualified as a yoga teacher as well cool. Um, cool. and gone through similarities and differences in her journey towards getting there. Um, oh, there's <laughs> some building work outside the windows just got really loud. I hope, it, I hope you can still hear me okay. I feel like my whole flat's vibrating. Um, so, yeah, the just in their kind of their ability to just step back and 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 let us do that and has been you know I think of my dad as a bit of a control freak which he knows so I can say it (laughs) um but at the same you know you you, that's kind of based on a really narrow uh I guess viewpoint and or of experience and actually when you step back and see the bigger picture like wow they've you know been incredibly supportive and 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 let us make make our mistakes and celebrated our successes and and um I'm incredibly grateful for that um so yeah they both mum and dad in very different ways have had had a big um influence on me and I'm super excited actually yesterday I've just booked my I'm doing my first workshop in America, which is cool. really exciting. Um, I wow. recently realized that I have um, a YouTube video that I don't, it must have been put on a playlist or something somewhere. But yeah. um, for some reason, um, it's been really popular in, in the States. So I'm heading to New York and I'm going to do a workshop there in September. And I called my parents last night and, and cause I don't get to see them so much. They do this thing at the moment where they like, if they're both there, they'll put me on speakerphone and, and you can just, <laughs> it's, we, we all just get really excited speaking to each other. And oh, um, cool. I was, I was saying to them yesterday, I was like, I booked this trip and I'm really excited cause I love travel. I've learned to love traveling by myself. And um you know, I'm going to have these four days to just to do my thing. And, and mum was like, can I come? And I was like, well, I was kind of excited about going by myself, but I can't think of anything better than being, yeah. and, and mum's always had it in her head that like one day when, when I was a teenager, she always wanted to take to go to New York with me. And she's not been for probably 30 years, but she um, wow. she just had it in her head that it was something that she wanted to do with with me and probably my sister, too. Um, but but wasn't ever ever feasible growing up and so the like the fact that she's coming with me um in September it's just yeah it will That's be fun so cool. it was and you know and it's just being able to kind of honor mum mum and dad but like as the individuals that they are rather than yeah. just like the parents that yeah, they are yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so they've had and and watching them make the transition that they've made now to this new business that they've created together has been super inspiring so um it's not been an easy ride for either of them or both of them um yeah. but um but yeah so there's 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 always new things to be learned from them mm. so yeah pretty isn't it cool i mean it it sounds like really cool people and what a what a nice upbringing like you know i was just when i was listening to you now i was thinking how awesome it is um how contagious um passion is uh from people you know like with your dad and his music uh it was just super contagious for you guys and the family Mm -hmm. and singing along and and i presume you probably take that with you now into your workshops and retreats because you're really passionate about what you do and um, I guess you've gleaned that partially from him and obviously now all from them. And, and how, do you, how do you find your workshop? Do you enjoy interacting as a yoga teacher or in workshops or in retreats? Do you find those face-to-face moments really fun and, and enjoyable as well? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's where the depth of my work or the opportunity within my work really sits um I I teach classes um like weekly in London and and I love them and some of them like I have a class tonight at six o'clock and it's like one of my favorite times of the week um I just get to completely I have so much fun but they're also they, they don't take themselves too seriously but we also do some like we do some yoga and and we you know and we we can actually 
um, explore the practice together. Whereas sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of a treadmill. It's um, it's a funny um, space, the, the yoga industry in London at the moment. Um, and so many people are qualifying as teachers and, you know, there's this kind of, um, it's, it, it's funny at the moment and, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it, but I'm also, again, trying to just give myself the space to explore actually being, coming back to that idea of authenticity is like, where is, where is my work? What is my work and what can I offer? And actually I feel like my weekly classes just scratch the surface. And for me, there's incredible opportunity when you have people together for um a longer period of time and you can kind of hold that space because what you're doing as a as a teacher teachers like a I, I think a funny word and I recently did a training and they used the word facilitator which perhaps fits it more um but this idea that you're not it's it's not that I'm trying to put my knowledge onto anybody else um, but actually to facilitate an environment where they can just learn from themselves. Um, because everything, my, my belief in the way that I work is that we know everything already. It's all like all of the wisdom that we could ever want to know is, is, is within us in some way or the opportunity for that wisdom is within us in some way. And so having the, um, having the space to explore that for ourselves and to be guided is, is, is the, um, is the practice. And as a, as a teacher or a guide or a facilitator, it's, it's holding that space for people to do that. And, um, yoga is powerful. Um, so a lot of, I, I, I have, I'm very fortunate to be able to do lots of different things in my work from which all stems around kind of teaching yoga, but goes out into various different things, whether that's more corporate environments where it's less yoga and more kind of balance. And, you know, there, there's lots of different ways of exploring it, but there's something really special about having a group of people together um, creating a safe space for them to just dive into their practice and helping to guide them through whatever it is that comes up for them. And, and so for me, the, yeah, the workshops and, um, and the retreats and stuff is where the magic really happens mm. for, for most. Yeah. And, and I feel like my, um, I guess, my strengths um are or or my passion probably probably is a better word is is in guiding that and and facilitating that for people um, um and the experience in organizing all those club nights and fashion shows and things back in the day um come come into the, their own and I get to cut you know it's so I got but I'm doing a retreat in Bali in February and I've just found my venue and I've never had this before but I was cool. looking at it and I got like full-on butterflies cool. at the excitement of like wow. being there and creating this space for people and I, I've just got goosebumps talking about it I'm so so, so yeah. lame but it just makes me so excited and yeah. um and yeah because that's the passion i was talking about yeah, yeah i guess yeah. <laughs> but that's so cool like like and also you know we obviously like follow you and stuff and you've you've put together quite a few of these already and i think weren't you in bali earlier on this year or was that the end of last year I was. Yeah, yeah 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 and, and uh so 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 what what do you actually um yeah what do these retreats uh, consist of basically you know and and how do you is it just you that sets them up do you get people to help you do you have other people working there what's the sort of format of them so usually they depending on the location um they they change a little so i was in bali um at the beginning of this year i had uh just been i did a retreat in thailand and i was actually meant to be in australia which i think we talked about because i was like oh maybe we're, yeah. we could record this if i'm <laughs> over in australia yeah. and then um uh that ended up australia fell through 
Um, and I ended up with some time to spare. So I went to Bali and I hadn't been there for about 10 years. And I went to a very different uh, part of Bali than I'd been to before. And I just fell completely in love with um, with lots of it and um and decided that that was definitely going to be the next place for the retreat but the the um the retreat that I did in Thailand was the setup was kind of different usually I would have a um I'd rent a villa or you know a, a, um, a home of some sort and hire a chef um to who I would discuss like we come up with a menu together um and then I'll teach two yoga classes a day so one which is more dynamic in the morning um although at the moment my classes are quite slow anyway but one which is more of a flow and then in the evenings I teach like more of a yin and then there'll be some meditation and workshops and things throughout um depending on how long the retreat is so I have one in July which is in the UK and it's just it's like Thursday uh evening till till friday late afternoon and so obviously you structure that very different to something that's 10 days on the other side of the world um and but i always try to kind of theme them around an intention so a lot of my work is intention led so when i go to teach this evening i won't have a full class plan i'll just have an intention and then i'll let the um the the space the people there and and like guide the class but Hmm. in line with the intention that I showed up to bring and um and so that's what I do in my retreats I I I plan them around an intention and then I let it be guided by um by what's there and who's there and and the energy and what feels right because I found that in order to kind of again it comes back, back to that creating space in order to be reactive to what's what's around you you know if I had this complete plan of everything that I wanted to achieve or to to share in in a retreat environment then you can't necessarily react so um so or closely to 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 what actually happens when you're there and so I like there to be space to be be um yeah reactive um and so I try to run a few a year um it's a really wonderful way to travel um and also to i think as a as a teacher to explore new ways in in facilitating things and um i learn something new from every group um the challenges are always different the um the being in different venues and different countries always means that the challenges change as well um and but really i just enjoy sharing space with and holding space for people to just completely indulge in time for themselves and you know and and seeing what that means for different people is also really really interesting I feel like I'm learning more and more about people um every time I uh, I hold any kind of workshop or retreat mm. um and that's amazing because it's I think it's they say something mm-hmm. like you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, so the more that you broaden the people that you spend time with, the more opportunity is that the, the more opportunity there is to, to bring in different um, uh, perspectives and, and learn from, from different experiences, you know, and mm-hmm. hearing where other people have come from and, and what they, the choices that they've made is an amazing way to kind of open up to, to mm-hmm. different experiences and opinions and things. And, and actually my boyfriend and I have set up a new, um, uh, uh organization, I guess it's called, can we just ask, and the idea being is that we realize that we, you know, we, a lot of, I said, I said at school, I was really good at being spoon fed. <laughs> so I realized that a lot of the conversation that I had was actually regurgitation of things that I'd read or heard from other places without conscious um, deliberation and forming my own opinion, right? Yeah. I just regurgitate something that somebody else has said. My boyfriend's very different. He's 
very critical thinker. And, and so that's less his thing. But we realized that a lot of the conversations that we were having with different people were um, possibly quite narrow because you tend to, to mix with people that are similar to you. And mm. um, I think things like Brexit and Trump and all of these things are really good examples of how you never think something's going to happen because you only see what's around you sure. and, then, and then things happen, completely take you by surprise. Um, and it sort of made us realize how much of an opportunity there was to learn from without, from outside of our immediate um, field. Mm. And, um, and so we set up this, um, is starting with a, a panel events. It's called Can We Just Ask? And the first one was on um, uh, whether or not plastic free was actually sustainable, um, which kind of led on from um, an initiative that I started the year with called No Time to Waste initiative mm -hmm. about kind of lowering my impact um, in terms of waste and plastic and things. Um, but we talked about whether or not plastic free was actually sustainable because I was going around telling coffee shops that they shouldn't be using this kind of cup or that they should yes. be doing this. And I was like, wait, mm. do I know that? Or have I, I read that? Yeah. Is that, yeah. you know, and um, where, where can I dig a little bit deeper and, and actually educate myself um, before regurgitating information? And, yeah. and our next topic, which is in, in kind of 10 days time is, um, is on what it means to be a man. So just, yeah. I mean, we're not specifically looking at environmental issues or, you know, there's not, we, yeah. we want to really broaden the conversations that we're having. And the idea is that we're just, um, our strap line is that we're starting conversations that matter. Um, oh, so cool. and cool. just trying to get a diverse range of people talking about things so that we're broadening Good. our kind of network of information and, um, and learning more, um, because you learn so much from other people. Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the more time so you that... spend with, with other people, the, the more opportunity you have to learn. So. So I just wanted to ask you, this sounds like such a cool initiative because, yeah, I mean, obviously we subscribe to that kind of thinking totally yeah. as well. Is that like a live panel event with some kind of a person that's maybe in the know about that? Or is it just the two of you that are like the leading the panel discussion or? So when we put this together, we originally were thinking about making documentaries rather than live panel discussion and then we realized that the whole point is that it isn't necessarily about finding the answers it's about um there's a famous quote and forgive me that i can't remember who it's from but it's um that sometimes um questions are more important than answers mm. and this idea that actually we can gain so much from the conversation around the question rather than looking for the answer it's like in yoga yeah. we we shouldn't be looking for like the end destination like the pose isn't the destination it's like all of the nuances on the way there that are the important things and so we the whole idea was that we don't know the answers and we'll probably not find one answer um and we want to ask the questions just as much as everybody else. So Will and I host the panel, um, but it's audience-led. So the audience that come to the live events or um, uh, ask the questions or questions, we encourage people to submit them like on social media and things in advance. So if people can't come to the discussions, then, um, then their questions might start the conversation because obviously we have a few questions that, that kind of kick things off. And then we have panelists who represent different points of views and different experiences within, um, within the conversation that we're having. Um, because it's when we, we, we don't want to know what the answer is before we started talking and actually what we yeah. found from the first event is that there isn't an answer. Um, and the, that's the exciting bit is like not knowing where the conversation is going to go. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So that's, that, that's the biggest bit of work actually is finding um, a diverse panel that allows us to kind of bring in those different points of view, um, particularly with the one that's coming up about what it means to be a man is that actually we'd have to have a, hun a panel of like hundreds of men to really get start to get a sense of what it really means to be a man. But we're choosing three or four people to try and represent some of those differences in opinions. Um, 
and differences in experiences. Um, but yeah, so so it's been it's been really fun, um, and I'm excited for. We have um, we're just coming up with our third topic. We've got so many that we want to talk about. It's just like choosing yeah. your order to talk yeah, about wow. them, um, and um, yeah. So that's kind of, and it's a fun way to talk about something other than yoga and well-being for yeah. me because when you the sustainability um side of things was a natural progression from yoga because it plays a huge part in what it means to be a yogi and to live yoga rather than to just do it um and so that was a really natural progression but with with all of the other conversations that we want to have they're just general you know topics that are conversations that we want to have and that feel important and and it's funny because we use the words important but important is really hard to define but if somebody somewhere wants to know the answer to a question then it's an important question yeah because it's valuable to them yeah um, sure and so we might, you know, it's like there isn't a stupid question, and and if enough people want to ask about a topic, then it's a then it's worth having an event and and sharing ideas about. That's, um, yeah, and that's, again, an yeah. amazing opportunity to learn. Like we learned so much at the last one. Totally, yeah. It's really cool. I can imagine. Yeah, it sounds like such a cool um, mm. event to hold. Uh, it would be really interesting to come to one of those and and mm, see how definitely. see how they go and like get involved in the crowd and the questions and stuff. Definitely. Yeah, so, come along. Can people just like you, you, I, I'm assuming you post it on social media and stuff like that, and they yeah. Can just... So it's on. We have a website which is canwejustask.co, okay. and um, and it's on there, and also on the Can We Just Ask social media um, as well. Um, but it's a ticketed event. It's like two hours on a Thursday evening. Um, we try to arrange. Um, some drinks and yeah it's um we had a lot of people coming solo we had like a few people on date nights we had a few <laughs> like cool. groups of friends and um but just all different you know different people coming together and, and just talking about stuff um yeah. which was which was really really fun that's yeah. really that's really interesting and and uh we spoke to a lady recently on our podcast uh, diane mcgraw and she's actually one of the finalists uh, for the Mars One project, which basically they're sending people to Mars in 2032. So out of 200,000 people, she is in the top, well, she's one of the last hundred uh, to be selected wow. yeah. out of four people to go in 2032. Anyway, she's massive into sustainability and she's a, she's a scientist and she sits on a lot of panels and things like that in Australia and she's big into plastic as well so she mm. and she she experiments a lot and does a lot of these um these, these things like so so the one thing was is she she lived a year without plastic right yeah. and and it was fascinating listening to it but then off the bat actually the, the interesting part about sustainability is in relation to the trip to mars uh when you go to when you go to anywhere in space there's like this panel that or, or organization which has these rules on things and whatnot and they say when you go into space one of the things you can't do is you can't litter and you can't like leave a footprint basically mm -hmm. um so they have to come up with ways before 2032 to not leave any waste right so and and one of them is like you know to have um containers i guess you know so instead of plastic you have to come up with something that's almost biodegradable and mm -hmm. It's just fascinating, you know what I mean? Like the type of stuff that's going on and, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is that you came up with to your question, but, you know, I'm sure the answer is probably yes, you can live without plastic. Um, but then it, it does have a lot of uses in a lot of industries. Um, you yeah. know, like medical, for example, it's really, really big and important. So what, what was your outcome with it? So there wasn't one outcome um, and we were basically we were trying to work out whether or not it was actually sustainable. So like can businesses and individuals and the world really function sustainably without plastic? And we had um, 
somebody there who was campaigning for a plastic free island supermarkets who was saying like yes there are there are changes that we can make that can make this more sustainable we had um a consumer point of view and we also had a business point of view and the business point of view was um was ella mills from deliciously ella um which was which was a funny turn of events but she very kindly um stepped in to produce to present that side and she was so perfect for it because she really really cares about trying to make her business um as responsible as possible um but what they are finding at the moment is that a lot of the solutions don't yet exist Mm. and so what we have to just i guess understand is that we can um we can make changes and we can move towards this, towards the changes. But where solutions don't exist yet, we also have to do so with patience because we've created this culture of, um, of excess and impatience, which is why we have so much plastic Um mm and or so much single use plastic like the the convenience aspect of it and not only do the solutions need to be come up with in the first place but we also need to repattern consumer behavior Mm -hmm. and neither of those two things are going to happen overnight and so we can make short-term decisions now with and, and, and do what we can now, but we also have to be in it for the long game. The scary thing is that from an environmental perspective, it doesn't feel like we have that long. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But if the solutions don't really exist, then it isn't sustainable. And I think the plastic industry is one of the biggest employers um, in, I want to say in the UK, but I famously misquote things. So I'm not going to, I'm going to, there's some amazing statistic wow. about, um, about, the amount of jobs that are provided by the plastic industry Hmm. and while it doesn't forgive the impact that the industry is having on the environment it's from a when you look at sustainability as a broader sense um if you think how many family homes run on the incomes from that industry then it actually starts to get very very difficult to overnight just wipe out plastic so it's it's a lot more when you go when you scratch the surface mm-hmm. and you start to dig a little bit deeper there are some fundamental in like huge issues yeah. that we need to address in order to make the changes sustainable and as a consumer it's very easy to be impatient like me running around telling everyone to use vegware which is this compostable mm-hmm. um stuff made out of um like plant cellulose or something amazing um I didn't realize that you can't just put that in your home compost and it breaks down. Like it doesn't work yeah. like that. Yeah. And so it's that regurgitation of being like, we should change this, <laughs> but without the solution, it's not, it's a very naive way of trying to um, make change. Of course. Yeah. We have to, yeah. we have to go a little bit deeper in order to be a, or a lot deeper in order to maybe be able to, work out how we can make things like this happen on a big scale yeah but that being said when we spoke at the beginning of the podcast i was saying about tasks seeming really big how do we break them down so what we can do is we can accept and again um you mentioned about this hard idea of acting and acceptance like we can act on the things that we can change like i can reduce my personal consumption in general and that will impact how much plastic I use. Like just my consumer choices, being more conscious as a consumer can is something that I can change right now. But the fact that I am currently finding it almost impossible to buy salad leaves that aren't in plastic yeah. isn't mm. something that right now I can change until I have an allotment or a vegetable patch yeah, like exactly. my own. Or I can I can find a way of, of accessing those like in my I'm I'm so what I'm learning is that um when I did this no time to waste initiative at, in in January at the beginning of year I went kind of cold turkey and cut out everything and then I realized that actually mm. for, for me right now it 
doesn't feel entirely sustainable. But what I learned was that there are a huge amount of choices that I can make that will make a considerable difference to my consumption. And so rather than looking at this as being perfect, what can we do to break it down into smaller things and make consistently work on making things more manageable for ourselves and having and driving positive change rather than trying to save the world overnight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It really speaks to what you were saying earlier about, you know, it's very easy for people to jump on a bandwagon and say, don't do X, Y, and Z. But uh, what you were saying earlier about just, you know, taking the time to do your own research and think for yourself is so important because often there aren't you know absolute answers there aren't just a definite yes or no or this is good or bad it's it's often often way more nuanced than that so you do actually have to come up with a sort of a, a solution for yourself that's practical like you were saying a moment ago as well and what what is your I'd love to hear this it's a, it's a big topic but I'd love to hear what your ideas are on that you know with animals the sustainability side of that and and what Obviously, you're a bit of a thinker in terms of how these things work and how it impacts the future. Um, but with eating animals, do you? What, what is your take on that? Um, so I'm vegan. Um, I feel really good on a vegan diet. That was kind of why I first came to it. And then I was would go through phases where I'd crave something, so I might eat a little bit of fish or the occasional egg. And, and then go back to being vegan for another six months. I haven't had that. I haven't had any animal products for a little while now. I just don't seem to be craving. Uh, craving is the wrong word. It just doesn't enter into my headspace. Like when I look at a menu, I wouldn't be like, oh, that sounds quite nice. I just, it just isn't what I, what I eat. Um, I feel I find labeling really hard actually for that reason I've always tried not to attach to labels like vegan or um I don't know can't think of another example right now but (laughs) because it it creates a set of expectations that you are meant to meet Mm. and actually because I came into all of this through a perspective of trying to um make myself feel the best way that I possibly could that was fluid, you know, sometimes it would mean one thing and sometimes it would mean another. So if someone's like, I thought you're a vegan and they see you eating an egg, then you've got someone to answer for and you've got a reason to feel guilty. Whereas if we can kind of detach from labels, I think it kind of, it we can have principles and we can have intentions and we should stick to those. But, um, but it allows us the space to just explore things and be curious which I think is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, but from a sustainability aspect, I think the, the and this is something that I'm really interested to keep learning about, but I think the greatest issue is undoubtedly the excess in consumption again, you know, with everything, mm-hmm. like the, the reason that we've got ourselves into as much of a pickle as we have is because we take more than we need. Mm-hmm. And people used to eat meat a couple of times a week like then it went to once a day and now I read something about a year ago which said that in the states people eat meat four times a day wow considering your um most people are advised to eat three meals a day like where does the extra portion of meat come from (laughs) and the production of that just isn't sustainable for our environment um and it's probably not that sustainable in most people's bodies either um but that's kind of a whole other conversation that i'm not particularly (laughs) qualified to talk about um but it's it comes down to this same thing of where am i making choices that are in excess and which of those choices are important to me and which of them are not because if somebody loves to buy shoes right you're not going to tell them that they can never buy a pair of shoes again but where can they make choices in other parts of their lives which mean that that's fine for them to indulge in that area of their life and the there's it's all about responsibility and you know we're not 
I, perfection doesn't exist. And I think we live in a world where there's far too much temptation and, um, and variety to just to, to be at the bare, bare minimum. I think it's un, when you have the opportunity to have more than you need, then you shouldn't feel as though you can't. But I believe that we should take responsibility for the choices that we make and and pick our battles and try to pick our back battles a little less self selfishly so that mm. the choices that we're making not only benefit ourselves but but also at least don't harm um and yeah. and while i wouldn't tell everybody to be vegan um because that's personal choice and some people might feel terrible mm. um by eating that way like is there a way that you can buy better quality local meat yeah. and, and eat mm. it once a day or a couple of times a week instead of buying packets of huge packets of, yeah. of meat and, and eating loads sure. and loads of it and or throwing it away. That's the other big thing. Yeah. Is like how oh, much yeah. waste do we do we produce just because of what we, you know, I used I always used to buy in in the UK you can buy like a kilo of carrots and they're normally about 90p or a pound. <laughs> so you'd buy the kilo of carrots rather than spending I don't know the same amount of money on on half as many loose carrots but you're buying a kilo of carrots in a plastic bag and <laughs> nine times out of ten I'd throw away half the half the, yeah. the packet or like the same with spinach is always over. I had a really ridiculous conversation with someone recently they were like why does you only ever get through half a packet of spinach I think like, yeah because we're buying these things <laughs> yeah. that are this big because because they're because it's good value but actually all that we need is the small packet yeah. so let's just let's just buy the small packet for one pound instead of the enormous one for yeah. one pound fifty exactly. because it's just going to end up in the bin <laughs> totally. it's just you don't think like, like we're not wired like that we because we're in this you know we see a good deal or we you know whatever yeah. it is and and just being smart about it so like i i now buy um as I, I sometimes buy it fresh but i for like my smoothies if i'm i mean it's been too cold to be drinking smoothies but now that the sun's <laughs> sun is shining um i buy um boxes with frozen spinach in so it comes like in these tiny, tiny balls of like scrunched up frozen spinach in a cardboard box. So there's no plastic. You get so much more <laughs> spinach in there um, and it lives in my freezer so it doesn't go bad. And I just throw a couple of blocks in my smoothie every time. It's like having a spinach ice cube, which yeah, sounds yeah. disgusting, but it's great in a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just things like that. If we're going to, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to be able to make myself a smoothie as for my breakfast then maybe I don't need to deprive myself of that but I can make smarter choices around it that's I mean that's a terrible example like we don't have to drink smoothies so <laughs> it's a good um, example and most of the time I don't, but, yeah. it, but it highlights the point <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and I, I actually I was checking um a smoothie that you um made recently or had recently it was a green one it was like a ice cream one I just looked like yeah it was so... this morning I was this morning I was like looking I was like yeah. my tummy was rumbling I was like that looks so good <laughs> yeah, it was actually a little bit too I didn't mean for it to be but it was a little bit too sickly first thing in the morning so I like put it in a put it in a, a, in a cup to have later because it was like actually tasted like ice cream for breakfast uh, well, well, <laughs> but it was mainly spinach it was mainly yeah. spinach but... <laughs> it sounds like a great breakfast ice cream yeah. and spinach for breakfast <laughs> good way to start the week it was in those quiet moments this morning where i was like i'm gonna take control i'm gonna do my meditation i'm gonna make myself a smoothie uh, <laughs> and then set myself up for the week <laughs> that's so cool uh, uh, any uh, we've Yes, we, we've literally hardly touched the surface with you as <laughs> well. Like, you know, we uh, it, it's amazing, like what a great chat that we've had. It's just been super fascinating. Mm. Um, and I'm just really conscious of time and, and you're a very busy, busy lady. Um, we just like to 
uh, find out a little bit about, you know, say maybe where people can get hold of you and also, you know, maybe things that you've got coming up in the future and then also, you know, let, let uh, people know about the book um, as well, you know, the one that you, that you wrote already um, and if there's anyone, any new ones coming up too um, and then, uh, yeah, just let us know about those, please. Well, thank you. It's been really fun. It's been really fun to talk to you guys. But um, but yeah, uh, if if people want to carry on the conversation, um, the I'm on Instagram at Mind Body Bowl. There's like underscores in between the words. Uh-huh. Um, um, I think if you type in Annie Clark, I'll probably come up somewhere in the search. Um, and and my website's the same. It's mindbodybowl.co.uk. Um, and yeah, my book, which has the same title, <laughs> Mind Body Bowl, um, is uh, it talks actually a lot about um, many of the things that we've discussed today, but but. It, brings together this idea of um, uh, well-being as an individual concept and um, you know it's very easy to look around especially in like this in this age of um, social media and all of this information online and um, there's a lot of unqualified information online as well um, mm. and um, just encouraging people to connect to themselves as their source of information when it comes to their well-being as much as educating themselves from other people it's just making sure that it comes back to you know you only only we know what makes us feel best and so the book kind of um guides people i hope through through kind of the philosophy in in that sense um and that's on on amazon and it's definitely on uk amazon um it's also available i found out recently in some bookshops in australia um and Uh and various other places but amazon amazon's always a safe bet um and yeah i've got um so retreats my big focus this this year is retreats or i've only got one more this year it's in july and then i've got a bit of quiet time where i'm going to just try and get my head down and um make some some big plans for next year mm-hmm. um but i'm going to be awesome. in bali in in february so um all of the information goes up on my website and um and various workshops in different places so yeah it's always it's always amazing to to connect with people in person um but if people can't make it to class and and to events and can we just ask and that kind of thing then then youtube is amazing as well for <laughs> um I, I share some flows and and things on there so yeah and i always t- try my best to to um engage with people on those platforms so i always love to hear from people mm. oh, that's really really amazing like what a what an interesting person i mean you've uh, definitely wise beyond your years i reckon it's it's you you've really got a really sort of calming way about you and it's really great to listen to so I, I really encourage our listeners to to go check out the stuff that you've got and your content and i love all the variety of things like can we just ask is a really great initiative and i can't wait to to see the journey that you know that you take people on uh, i hope some of those will be maybe live streamed or something like that down the yeah, track and absolutely. that'll be great i'd love to i'd love to check in on that and um, yeah just uh, from my side just you know thank you so much we had a really great chat like gareth said we hardly hardly touched the surface but i think we got so much value and i, I certainly did i've made some really interesting notes for, for like things that i want to check out now from chatting to you and um yeah just really exciting stuff that you're doing with it really valuable important stuff i think uh you know, teaching people to to think for themselves and to to be more present and declutter. These are all like super important things in this day and age. So, so thanks for spreading a good message and uh, and thanks from us uh, uh, and thanks for myself down in Australia. Oh well, thank you so much for making the time to chat to me. I've got my list of notes from you guys as well, so <laughs> I'm going to be spending my afternoon looking through those. But no, it's been so lovely to actually finally get to to meet you guys. So thanks for having me. Yeah, that's so cool. And and Annie, like just from from my side, like first of all, I'm so happy that we got to set this chat up. Um, it's yeah. it seriously has uh, you know well been worth the wait. Like. Um, I literally 
feel like you're almost a young philosopher and craig said you know you're like you're, you're literally wise beyond your years it's, it's hard to think that you're 27 years old um i i felt like i was I was listening to this really old wise woman that was just sharing this amazing knowledge with me and and there was there was so much cool stuff in there you know like literally i like same as you guys i've got these lists of things that i'm like now gonna go look into and want to sort of you know implement in my life so i can only imagine Looks like we've got a very busy afternoon ahead yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. more tabs more tabs more, yeah more tabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the things. Yeah. Uh, it is weird. I was watching this show last night on Amazon with a guy. I think his name is Das Ram or something. Really, yeah, fascinating. Ram Das. Ram Das. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A really Ram fascinating Dass, yeah. guy. And I'm like, I'm listening to the younger version and of it, and it's a lady, and she's speaking to me now on the podcast. <laughs> so, well, well you, 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 I'm not. Those are big boots to fill. No, but, but. honestly, like, I mean. <laughs> You know you're on this amazing journey and you're still so early on in this journey and and that, that's the exciting part you know and you're doing great yeah. things and the, the more important part is is you're doing them with from the right place with a good intention and i can only imagine that you have a huge impact on the people that already follow you and you're going to have a really big impact on many more people in the future so Wow, I'm kind of blown away and, and really, really happy that, uh, you know, that we, we finally got this together. I'm super excited to launch it in a few weeks time. And just thank you so much. You know, like it, it really has been a, a super chat. Um, yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm really, really touched by your words. So thank you. And thanks for having me. I can't wait to listen to it back in a few weeks time. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> Finally getting used to listening. And I was going to gonna say, it's voice. definitely, <laughs> you've certainly um, put into practice some of your uh, focus and mindfulness intention through some of the banging that was in the background <laughs> yeah. and you still kept I'm your so thoughts <laughs> coherent. No, no, that was amazing. I was like, that's impressive. <laughs> I, 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 I felt yeah. so bad as you're like, yeah, just make sure you're somewhere where it's quiet. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I, I, I didn't think it was happening today, but I am getting used to it. I was sitting in my living room and there was like a, I don't know what they were doing out there, but I think um, I think sometimes I don't even realize how loud it is because it's part of the part of the background noise. But I didn't background expect noise. it today, so thank no, you for being good. patient. No worries. Yeah, like, like Craig said, I was I was I could hear it in in the background, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she is concentrating so well and like giving <laughs> yeah, us like the the really look well. like it, it's, there's nothing else going on. <laughs> so well oh. done there. Your meditation is clearly helping a lot there. <laughs> yeah, just as well. I spent those 15 minutes like breathing this morning yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay we can handle this <laughs> oh well awesome. guys thank you so much for having me it's such a pleasure to chat to you thanks, both and, yeah, um, no, yeah, a have a great day cool, all thanks. right so, take care cool so, so.